In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can create a custom Salesforce list view. It only takes moments and both you as the admin and your users can take advantage of this amazing feature. So a list view is created from the object tab. So I've come onto the leads tab and from here I'm presented with my recently viewed leads. This is the default list view that you will see whenever you navigate onto any of the tabs on the menu here. Now recently viewed is great, but there's so much more we can do if we create a custom list view. So let's go ahead and see how easy it is. Now to create a custom list view, all we want to do is click on the cog icon and then we'll click new. First of all, we're going to give our list a name and we'll complete the API name. Next, we need to think about who can see our list view and we've got three options here. Only I can see this list view, all users can see this list view, or we can share the list view with a specific group of users and this can be based on things like public groups and roles. Now for my list view, I want to share it with all users, but a word of caution here, when you're creating list views or when you're training other people to create list views, be very wary about using the all users can see this list view option. It's very, very easy for the number of list views available to get out of hand and you can end up with lots of duplicate list views or lots of list views that aren't applicable to all users. Next, we'll click save. And straight away, we have our new list view, but it's not ready yet. What we want to do is now filter our list view to only display the information that we want to see. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that there is already a default filter. So it's filtered by owner and it's currently set to my leads. I could change this to all leads or queue owned leads. I can also filter by campaign name. But for this particular list view, I'm going to leave it on my leads. And this is great because this makes it a dynamic list view. And remember that we're sharing this list view with all users. Now, when an individual user looks at this list view, they're going to see their leads. When I look at the list view, I will see my leads. So it's a dynamic list view. So we'll click done, we'll accept this filter, and then we're gonna start adding filters of our own. Now for my list view, I want to create a core list of leads, and these will be leads that I haven't contacted. That's gonna be based on the lead status. And the other thing that I'm gonna to want to do is I'm only going to want to show leads that have a phone number. It's a call list, I need a phone number to dial. So if there's no phone number, I don't want them to appear on my list view. We're simply going to click add filter. And the first thing we'll do is let's go and take a look for our lead status. And we've got our operators here. We want equals. And this is a pick list. So we can choose a pick list or multiple pick list values if we wanted to. We're going to use open not contacted and we'll click done. So that's my first filter. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take a look at the phone number field. So let's scroll down and go around that. So we're going to say phone is not equal to null or blank empty. So we'll leave that empty. So that's saying the phone is not empty and that's great. We can save that and straight away I now have a list of leads that haven't been contacted that do have a phone number. But something you'll probably be aware of when we talk about leads, when we talk about contacts, is we don't just have the phone number field, the phone field typically being for a landline. We also have the mobile field, which is far more commonly used. So on this list view, I want to show leads that haven't been contacted that have either a phone number or a mobile number. So I need to add another filter. So let's go and take a look for our mobile field. Here we go, same principle as before, not equal to null. Now we could save this, but this is likely to cause us some problems. And the reason for that is as you add filters, it uses and. So what we're saying is lead status equals open not contacted, and the phone number is not blank, and the mobile is not blank. But this doesn't account for if we have the mobile number but not the phone or we have the phone number but not the mobile so what can we do here well we can take advantage of filter logic so you'll see we've got and 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 but let's just change this now to say one and two or three 
So now what this is saying is that it should be open, not contacted, and then we should have either the phone number or the mobile number. So let's save that. So that's much better. Now we've got our filter logic. So what else do we need to do to make our list view more useful? Well, let's click off of our filters for a moment and have a think about what else we need. But we might want to choose what fields to display. And if we click on our list view controls, that's the cog icon here, you can see we've got all these options. We can clone, we can rename, we can change those sharing settings at any point, And we can also select our fields to display. Very, very easy to change them and remove the fields that you don't want to see. Um, let's go and add our mobile number here. So we can adjust this to suit our needs. Other things we can do, we can sort, we can go up and down. If we have a, uh, a, lot, a text field, something like a description, we can wrap the field so that we can read more text on the page. And we also have the option to inline edit. Now you see the little pencil icon up here, that's the inline edit option. Fields that can be edited have a little pencil next to them. Yeah. Fields that can't be edited will have a little padlock here to show you that they can't. Something that you should note though about inline editing, if you use record types, then your list view must be filtered by a single record type before inline edit is available. Other things that we can do once we have our list view available, we can add charts. Let's click on show charts here. And typically it will come with a chart or multiple charts already available. And if that doesn't work for you, you can create your own chart as well. If you don't want to see the chart anymore, you can just toggle the chart off. If you've created a very useful list view and you don't want to see recently viewed as your default list view, then you should take advantage of pinning your list view. Now that this view has been pinned, every time I navigate to the leads tab here, I'm going to see this list view. Something else to be aware of is that you can view list views in different ways, a bit like having different types of reports. If we click on our little icon here, you can see we can display it differently. We're currently looking at the table view. We've also got the Kanban view, which is great for opportunities, or we've got something called split view, and this is ideal for call lists. So this gives you your list view, and if we click on one of the records, we can see the record detail here as well, so we don't have to navigate backwards and forwards. Let's go back to our table view, and let's just talk about one final feature that I really love that's really useful when working with a list view. If you want to access your favorite list view or list views from anywhere in Salesforce, then don't forget you can also add list views to your favorites just by clicking on the star icon. Now from anywhere within Salesforce, you can access your favorite records, favorite reports, favorite dashboards, and favorite list views.